be able to get into that mindset where you can start taking care of yourself really starts with the mind. I feel like we start so often with nutrition programs or we start with exercise programs. And yes, those are important. Those are the vehicles, but being able to stay in that vehicle and drive it starts with our mind. And if we don't have those changes that happen, then we're not able to actually go anywhere with it. Hey friends, welcome to the More Than a Mother podcast. I am your host, LaJuan Moses, and I am a mom on a mission to help you master your mindset and own your time so you can make space in your busy life for your dreams and goals. Join me each week for tangible tips, tools, and strategies that you can use to show up as your personal best in motherhood, business, and life, as well as inspiring interviews from moms just like you who are sharing their stories of triumph in order to uplift encourage and empower you on your journey at more than a mother we believe you can pursue your dreams and be a great mom at the same time we are helping you truly step into your own and find the freedom to do more of the things you love and enjoy without feeling guilty or overwhelmed my guest today is dr lauren lauren is a family doctor of nursing practice and a certified life and neurolinguistic coach. She is a boy mom, wife, and author of Living Between the Lines. On today's show, Lauren and I talked about how she is empowering moms that are in medicine to kind of find that balance in life and be able to pursue their dreams and goals. We also talked about the importance of mindset when it comes to nutrition and healthy lifestyle habits. And we talked about what it means to be a super learner and a time hack warrior. When asked what it means to be more than a mother, Dr. Lauren said, it means leaving a legacy for my baby boy and showing him that hard things are not impossible and can even be fun, that he can do anything and do it with love and character. Let's dive in to my conversation with Dr. Lauren. Hi, Dr. Lauren, how are you? I am well, how are you doing? I am wonderful. Welcome to the More Than a Mother podcast. I am so glad to have you here with me today and cannot wait to get into this interview and talk about all you are doing for moms and women these days. But before we get into all of that, if you could just take a moment and introduce yourself to the audience, tell us a, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, absolutely. So I'm Lauren Dury. I'm a family doctor of nursing practice. I've been in family medicine now for almost five years as an ICU nurse before that. I am also a mom to a very fun little four-year-old boy. Um, he is absolutely my fire and he's the biggest reason why I started kind of helping, especially other moms, be able to get home faster to their babies. So while also still building up their own um, their own entrepreneurial uh, ventures and being able to help balance that, I think is so important and so hard. So. Yes, it is. That's wonderful. It's good to hear how our kids can be our motivation. Now, if you would just go ahead and walk us through your kind of transformational moment and your journey that puts you on the path that you're on today. Yeah, sure thing. So I guess probably it starts right after I graduated with my doctorate and I pretty much almost instantly adopted a practice. And so I was working literally 60 hours a week and very overwhelmed, run down, just completely overwhelmed all the time. Not the person that I ever expected myself to be, especially after reaching my dream of, of becoming a nurse practitioner. And I got really overwhelmed. I knew that I did an entire dissertation over wellness, and I knew that that was super important for me to do, but I wasn't able to find traction to be able to start getting healthy, eating right and exercising and all the things. And it was causing that horrible negative cycle that so many of us have been in at least once in our life. Well, I found a solution to that and I started to really transform my health. I got my energy back. I got a lot of my confidence. I started to feel really good. I was able to feel like I was actually healthy again. And that was really great. I helped my anxiety through cognitive behavioral therapy and I was able to do a lot of things. But then what brought me down my path today was probably whenever the pandemic hit and so many of us 
in medicine were working, we found ourselves like I was, you know, I thought I'd left the hospital for probably ever. And I was just going to be you know, doing the cush office job forever now, which wasn't as cush as I thought it was <laughs> You know, going into it. Nothing ever is. And I found myself still having to see the same amount of patients in a shorter amount of time. So I was working even longer days. And then those days that I was that I was not in the office, I was now in the hospital as well. So I was literally seeing, I was literally working from working 60 hours a week to, you know, plus every single week. And it was very overwhelming. I had, you know, I really just figured out that I had a near breakdown and I really just, I figured out that, Hey, you've got to start working smarter because this just isn't working. And I, that's whenever I started really diving deep into becoming a super learner and time hack warrior and like figuring out how I can find out, you know, pull energy from different areas rather than, you know, going back to bad habits of over caffeinating and those kind of things. And then I started realizing that I had so many, there was, I mean, it's just, it's, it's almost a pandemic in itself. How many moms in medicine are going through what I went through and it just became my passion to start helping them. And that's kind of where I am now. That's an awesome journey and a story. And just the fact that you're able to focus on helping the moms in medicine and bring that perspective of what it is like for a mm-hmm. mom in medicine, especially just normally. But now that you're in a whole pandemic and for you to be able to speak to the real crisis that was happening in the healthcare industry and you're still a mom, you still have all these other things going on. But as you said, you had to work 60 plus hours a week now because of this pandemic. If you are enjoying this show, feeling inspired and motivated, learning something new, or just want to show some love, please do me a favor and help me spread the word. Screenshot this episode and share your favorite takeaways in your Instagram stories. I am truly growing my Instagram and I want you there on the journey with me as we continue to grow and build. Don't forget to tag me at Lawan Moses so that I can share your share. Each time you share this show, it helps me to reach more and more moms just like you. Don't keep this greatness to yourself. Tell a mama you know about the More Than a Mother podcast today. Remember, motherhood is a universal experience and we are all in this together. So as you mentioned, you mm-hmm. were going on this path where you're working 60 plus hours a week, you had to start to transform your health and realize that this is not really what you wanted for your life and that there had to be better. What were kind of like those first steps that you started taking when you were recognizing this happening? Uh, I think probably my first steps, just like, just like anything else, any other change in life, I feel like very often one of our first steps is denial. And I definitely went through that denial. I told myself that there's no way around this. I can't, I don't have control over this. I remember literally we went away on vacation, probably shouldn't have, you know, but we did. We went on because I was so overwhelmed. And the day that we came back, I just had tears streaming down my face. My poor husband was just sitting there looking at me like, why are you crying? Because I'm going back. And it was so overwhelming. And I literally, I just told myself, I mean, I was the victim you know, I couldn't change anything. I couldn't change the pandemic. I couldn't change my hours. I couldn't change my demands. I couldn't change that I was, that I couldn't see my son as much as I wanted to. And I went through denial. And then after I kind of sat in that for a little bit, and I decided that I wasn't going to settle for that, I decided to dive deep. And that's whenever I say that I compressed. Instead of evolving and just kind of fitting the motions and getting by, which is what I've been doing, I decided to compress and I figured out how to work smarter and not necessarily harder so I could overcome that challenge. So I think that was kind of the, the process that, that happened for me. I like how you started with the denial thing because I feel a lot of us, that is a natural first step. But a lot of us, when we when we reflect back on our transformation journeys, we omit that part of being in denial <laughs> And feeling that part where you can't change anything and you are the victim. And a lot of us are in that moment, but we don't like to mention that part or we even forget about it because we've made it to a certain point. But I love how you point out that it's a natural first step that 
when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're going through something, when things are out of your control, it is natural to just be in denial at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love how you say it's natural because it is. Yeah. We give ourselves grace, right? No shame. It's natural. Yes, it is very natural. And I just feel I haven't talked about that on here. So I really like that you brought that up, that denial Mm -hmm. is kind of that first step in your transformation because that's where you are. And now, as you said, you started to recognize that, okay, this is where I need to go. I want to do something different. And you said you started to compress things and figure out, okay, how can I work smarter and not necessarily harder, even in the midst of everything being chaotic. And it sounds like you kind of took control over things that you could have control over so that you could start to make the changes in areas that you did have that ability to. So what would you say when you were making these kind of changes and taking back that control did you face like any obstacles or any challenges as you were kind of navigating this as it was all new to you well i think the obstacle that i faced first was i decided somebody has to have this figured out already somebody has to have this figured out how i can get done with my day faster and nobody really did specific to my population to the mom in medicine So I think my first obstacle was putting it all together, finding the right resources and finding the time to do that. Because like I said, I was already very strapped for time, but I knew that if I just kept going, it was just going to keep getting worse. And I already saw that cycle happening. So I think finding the resources originally were really was really pretty difficult because we are living in a time where especially with the recent, recent, recent pandemic. I mean, we literally would have just books thrown at us that you need to know this. Okay. Now this has changed. You know, now there's, now there's this to research. Now there's this treatment to know about. I mean, it was, it was insanity at first, especially, but it still continues every day. So we're in a time in our life where we have more need for knowledge than ever. We are literally the demand for us to learn more information every single day is just growing exponentially, but yet our tactics for learning have pretty much stayed stagnant. And on top of that, we have things such as uh, digital dementia, where we were so reliant upon these phones and we're so reliant upon our computers and reminders and those type of things that we don't remember things like phone numbers. We don't remember things like meetings. We rely upon these things and we're losing those parts of our brain. Legitimately, they are, they, they uh, get smaller and they're not as active. And so we're in the midst of a time when we need to know knowledge more than anything and learn it faster. And at the same time, our, our cognition is actually going down. Right. And I can see how you say that because I do agree as they call them smartphones, but as people like to say, they're dumb phones because they seem to be making us kind of dumber because we don't have to remember anything and everything is at our fingertips and at the, like, we can just access it within minutes. And I love how you were like, you had there, you had to learn so much information in such a short period of time. And Mm -hmm. our learning methods really haven't changed with how we do things. So I really just, I like how you framed all of that, which is having to have that memory, have that knowledge, learn these things and put all these things together. And you said that you are, you cater especially to moms in medicine. So as a Mm -hmm. mom that is in medicine, like what is the experience of a mom in medicine? Not even outside of the, you can include the pandemic or just regularly. Like what is that experience like for a mom that's in medicine? It is, it's a very taxing. So the women that I work with, more often than not, I, I see this almost maybe 100% of the people that I've worked with. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that haven't said this, but you feel so exhausted giving and giving and taking care of and nurturing your patients and your clientele that by the time you get home, you literally feel like you have nothing left. And that's something else that I had to kind of work through and figure out how to, that's that's where we dive in deep in finding our energy and repurposing, finding our repurpose again and, and finding the energy through that. Because majority of women in medicine, by the time we get home to our families, we are just so spent in that way. It's very difficult. And we are not as compassionate as we would like to be or near as attentive as we'd like to be to our families sometimes. 
And there's guilt, there's shame that's associated with that. And that guilt and that shame compounds. And I, I think those are more of the very, the things that are very specific to, to us in medicine. And, and it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult before you really, and sometimes you don't even identify that it's going on. And I think that can be the biggest barrier. Right. I'm sure that is a barrier because you have this career and a lot of it, it doesn't fit the nine to five profile that a lot of jobs fit. So I'm sure that comes with that added guilt, that added shame because you're in this mm -hmm. chosen field. But it's good that you have developed your practice and all of that so that you can start to specifically cater to the moms in medicine because I'm just thinking that in the people that I've encountered, I don't know that I've ever encountered anyone that has a business or practice that focuses on the needs of a mom that's in the healthcare industry of the in the medical fields. So like you said, you had to create the tools for yourself and it's good that you're able to do that. And I'm sure that a lot of moms in medicine are very appreciative of this. And those that are listening that have never heard of you, I'm sure are going to start to reach out to you because it's it's good to connect with someone that is there, that's doing the same work that you're doing and can really get it and understand it and help you through that process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's so important to just have that community too, you know, where it's, you don't feel alone. And I think that's been a lot of release for a lot of moms is I've asked them, you know, do you feel that way? because I used to, you know, I let them know, like, do you know, you feel guilty about that? Like I felt that way before. And they're like, actually, yes. Like I, you know, I didn't, I don't want to admit it to anyone. I've never told it to my family, but I do. And the community is huge. Yes. Community is huge in all that we do. And especially when it is a like-minded community. Back by popular demand, my course balancing the busy, how to manage family business and all the things is here for you. And I am so excited to announce that for the month of December, my course will be available for you for 50% off when you use the code Christmas. I know the end of the year, going into the new year, we are all about setting goals and priorities. And I want to help you do that with my course, Balancing the Busy. Inside this course, you are going to learn how to clear some things off your plate, set your priorities and boundaries. I'll give you some exact phrases, tools, and strategies on how to say no, and we are going to tackle that pesky mom guilt. So inside the course, you're going to have the worksheets and templates and everything you need so that you can start to balance the busy in your life. So head over to my website, LawanMoses.com, and grab Balancing the Busy, How to Manage Family, Business, and All the Things for 50% off for the month of December. Don't forget to use that code CHRISTMAS. So I was on your website and I saw how you have at the top of your website with healthy mind first, how you have heal the mind and then you can heal the body and the soul and that you are mm -hmm. big on finding clarity and peace in the, the journey to making your own health better. So what would you say when you're, because it is important to heal the mind first. So what would you say the benefits are of mindset practices in overall health? Uh, literally never ending. I really and truthfully believe that it, it always begins with what we're telling ourselves, our self-talk. Um, I, and I've been on this theory for so long and I'm finally being able to really put it into, into practice and see the results of it. But I've always said that there's a difference between somebody like the, the difference between somebody who can be able to be healthy and see themselves in that in that arena, be able to get into that mindset where you can start taking care of yourself really starts with the mind. I feel like we start so often with nutrition programs or we start with exercise programs. And yes, those are important. Those are the vehicles, but being able to stay in that vehicle and drive it starts with our mind. And if we don't have those changes that happen, then we're not able to actually go anywhere with it because we can't, we can't kind of, we can't hold on to to the process well so that's like with my mindset academy and those things i help break down the barriers for women in in the negative self-talk and taking away that shame that's so prevalent because we have as a culture we've really and truthfully put so much shame especially on women in 
body image and being able to, and that just keeps people stuck in there because you feel that shame, you embody it and you, you feel like, well, this is, this is how I'm supposed to be. You start identifying with it and you can't get out of it. I don't care how many nutrition plans or workout programs or anything like that, that you try and go through. If you have that identification that you can't, you, you, you just stay within it. So you have to break that down and realize that you're so much more and you're such an amazing individual and a strong mama bear and you can make amazing things happen. And once you really and truthfully believe that and break down those walls, then you can start making those changes for life, not just be able to stick on a fad diet and those kind of things. And and I feel like that's such an, an, an essential part to especially my population with the mama medicine, because we really and truthfully need to be per, we need to be performing at peak per, um, we need to be performing at at peak performance and the way that we fuel our body and our mind is, is such an important part of that. So I don't know if I went off too much of a tangent or if that answered what you were saying on that. No, that answered the question perfectly because I love the nutrition, how you said nutrition and exercise, that's where everyone starts. And it's so true. When you think about getting healthy, Whenever you're talking about a healthy lifestyle or whatever it is that you want to do, everyone immediately goes to, okay, I need to change the way I eat and I need to exercise more. It's never put out there and it's never thought, okay, no, I need to get my mind right first. I need to do mm -hmm. some mindset work and change my thought practices. Yeah. If I want to be successful and sustain a healthy lifestyle, and as you said, that leads to kind of that yo-yo dieting, those fad mm -hmm. diets, because the mind is really what is the messed up part or the has been through whatever the trauma or whatever it is that we go through, it's all in the mind. And so really you, as you said, you have to get your mind clear. So then you can go and be successful in some type of nutrition, exercise, healthy lifestyle program. So yeah, I feel that you broke that down perfectly and answered that perfectly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So tell me more about what you're doing with your practice and how you are helping moms in medicine. Uh, practice as a medical practice or with my programs? Yeah. With your programs, because you have healthy like, mind first with your business, yes. So, well, the first thing, I mean, I, I really, there's, it's so, there's so many elements to things. And I feel like the first part of it is being able to overcome anxiety and depression and overwhelm. So that's kind of the first tier there, because the thing about it is if we are able to be calmer and be happier, all of those good feel good hormones help with our learning. So a little background on this, I suppose. The part of our brain, the amygdala is our fight or flight part of our brain. So anytime that that's triggered, there's cortisol that's being sent there. Very close to that is our hippocampus. Our hippocampus is the part of our brain that's important for memory. And if our amygdala, which is really close adjacent to the hippocampus is constantly sending cortisol, it negatively affects our hippocampus and we're not able to focus or learn as well. So there's a little bit of a cycle in almost everything that we do in, in helping a mom in medicine. But the first thing we're gonna do is help them decrease that stress so then I can help them hone in better on their on their memory, the hippocampus, the, the memory part of their brain. Whenever you can remember things faster, you can recall them faster, you can, you don't have to flip through a chart and check yourself a thousand times or go on to our medical references and be checking yourself all the time because you know everything in your mind already, it decreases your stress. That decreased stress helps our memory, to help memory. So it goes in this beautiful cycle once we start rolling in that direction. The other part of that to help decrease stress is literally that even though I do a lot of cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy, neurolinguistics with my clients and helping them overcome those deep rooted anxiety and depression, uh, limiting beliefs and deceptive rules. The other part of that is we can overcome those things and it, it helps immensely with us cope of the stress of our job. But the truth of the matter is that our job is still very stressful. So if we can make our job easier through becoming a super learner, through becoming a time hack warrior, that decreases our stress even more. So it, and then it comes back into just making it all fit together better. 
Yes, it really does. And breaking down how the whole decreasing stress can increase your memory. I've never heard that before. So that is really good because I guess we never, we realize stress has an impact on a lot of things in our life, but never thinking of it as it relates Mm -hmm. to memory. So I think that that, yeah, that is good because I never would have thought of that being related to (laughs) your memory. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people do. A lot of a lot of people don't really think about that, but it does. Yeah, yeah, it truly does. I had a follow up question off of what you just said, and I can't think of what it was. <laughs> I'm trying to think what was the last thing you said, and I just it just escaped me because I had a follow up question. Um, I was talking about I think towards the end I was talking about like becoming a super learner and then time hack. Warrior. That what it was the super learner. That's what it is. Those two. okay, okay, okay yeah, thank yeah. you. All right, that's where I want to go. Awesome. Okay. Now you've you've been mentioned being a super learner and a time hack Mm -hmm. warrior. And I'm sure that people are like, okay, I want to know more about what does it mean to be a super learner and a time hack warrior? So if you could share that with us right now, because I truly am curious. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Okay. So this is one of my favorite things. Um, Neuroplasticity is the part of our, it's an amazing part of our makeup to where we can literally grow the strength of our mind. So just like we can work on our muscles and make them stronger, we can grow the strength of our minds. So the more that somebody works at things, you can remember stuff faster and learn things faster. So that's part of becoming a super learner is being able to leverage information that you already know, like the back of your hand and apply it to more complex things and then leverage that with neuroplasticity and you can learn faster. So what I mean by that, especially in, in the setting that I work the most close, you know, closely with in the moms of medicine is drug interactions or remembering your patient's names or remembering your patient's uh, diagnoses and their problem list, those type of things. And we're able to learn things faster. The other part of that is, and a lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this is one of the things that I had to learn whenever, you know, COVID about broke me was that there are tips and tactics and tricks that you can learn to remember stuff faster. Most people, whenever, so the basic learner will will go through, they'll read a book, they will highlight it, they might make notes on the side, and then they'll go back over it, read it, reread it, and keep on going back over it. That's rote memorization. We try to just kind of burn it into our brains. Well, I was having a discussion with my father one day, and... <laughs> background on my dad, he used to be an equine surgeon, so a horse surgeon. And he's pretty smart. He's always been really pretty, pretty smart. And he, rem- I started noticing that he remembered stuff so fast. I thought, dad, how do you do that? You've never, like, how do you do that? And he started teaching me all of these things that he does to learn faster, to just be able to remember it. Just like, like building shelves in your mind and you can take the, the thing that you want to remember and just stick it there and you remember what it is. And he started teaching me these things. And I was like, that's a huge key. That's a huge key to this, because if I can just start remembering stuff, read it one time and remember it or meet somebody one time and remember it, that's going to be a game changer for me. And then becoming learning how to read faster, uh, be a speed reader, but literally read as a mom of medicine. You, you can't skip over things. You have to literally read the whole thing. You just have to learn how to read it faster. Uh, So that's that's a big part of the super learn. So part of it is training our mind to literally just be more efficient. But the other thing is learning more efficient tactics to helping us be able to do that. And really, truthfully, anyone can apply that. I've just in my programs, I've applied it specifically to medications and things that are more specific to the mom and medicine so they can get home faster to their babies. That's wonderful. And I'm sure that is they are very appreciative of that. And that is the first time that I have heard of that. So thank you for sharing that with us because I was curious as you were saying it as to what exactly that meant. And uh, I can definitely see how that can help a mom in medicine or really just any mom in general. Mm -hmm. So aside from motherhood, what would you say has been the most rewarding part of your life journey so far? Oh, besides motherhood. The most, ex- I'm sorry, the most exciting or rewarding. I'm sorry, what was the word? Most rewarding. Rewarding. Oh, you already took my favorite one. <laughs> Being a mom. That's why I, I say think- that because when you ask a mom what their what the most rewarding part of life right. is, a mom will always say their kids and a motherhood. Mom. So that's why that's I always amazing. take that out because that's a given. It is always a given, yeah. 
I think that my, the most rewarding thing is probably really and truthfully being able to help other moms bust through the barriers that I went through. It is, it's not only life-changing for them, but it's life-changing for me. And it gives you purpose. Uh, I am, I'm a very faith-driven individual. So I think even helping somebody, probably even going further than that, is if I can help them build their faith deeper and being able to do that. I think that's prob- that is the most rewarding thing that I do. And that's not even just with moms in medicine. That's also with my patients because I'll do cognitive behavioral therapy with them. And you know, I can start somebody on a medication and make their life easier. And that's always rewarding too. But whenever I can help them make physical lasting changes without medication, no matter who it is, and be able to instill a deeper, help them develop their faith deeper. I think that's definitely the most rewarding thing for me. That is very rewarding. I am big on faith as well. So yes, that is definitely rewarding. Well, I thank you for joining me today. This is truly a great interview and very informative. And I feel that not only will moms that are in medicine be able to connect and benefit from this, but also moms in general. So I appreciate you sharing all that information with us. If you could just let the audience know where we can connect with you online so that we can stay up to date with everything that you have going on. Absolutely. So probably where I'm at most of the time is on Instagram. You can follow me there. Uh, reach out to me so I can follow you back. I really don't like the word follow. I connect, you know, so the, the button still says follow, but it just sounds um, so impersonal. But connect with me on Instagram uh, at dr dot lauren l a u r e n dot d n p and that's uh the easiest way to get a hold of me i always tell people you can also email me dr lauren aprn at gmail.com wonderful and i'll be sure to link to that in the show notes so that everyone can connect with you so thank you again for joining me i truly enjoyed this interview oh thank you so much it really was my pleasure Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, leave a review, and most importantly, share this episode with all of your mom friends. Let's continue to grow our mom community and support each other. Remember, together, we've got this.